Are you stressed out? Losing hair? Does your little soldier not want to stand at attention anymore? Well, my friend, you need to relax. And there's no place more relaxing than the tropical interplanetary tourist spa. Our founder, Baba Jibini, is the premier Afrimkin warlord in the galaxy. And he's waging a war on stress. Let him nuke your anxiety away for a low, low price. Have your every need met by our army of child soldiers in this tropical paradise. Come to Baba's tropical interplanetary tourist spa, where you have no choice but to relax. Welcome to my tropical Tropical Paradise, where today we'll be playing as Baba Jibini and his child soldiers. Well, for legal reasons, we'll be referring to Baba Jibini's definitely not child army as not a child. We're walking a fine line with this one, and I rather enjoy my personal freedoms. We'll be making a hotel on the rim with a focus on rest and relaxation, where people can melt away their stress. There's fancy rooms, gambling, and the right amount of amenities to make you forget about your day-to-day -day worries. We'll also be harvesting our guests' poop and selling it back to them as an alcoholic beverage. What? Maybe it's a German hotel. We're playing with Phoebe Chillax because it just fits the theme. A luxury hotel where our guests come to do just that. Chillax. What else can you do when you drink your own excrement? If it works in prison, why not here? Now I like to imagine that Baba Jibini was the greatest African warlord of his time, but due to international pressure, he had to flee and come to this rim world, where he now has to start anew. But his time floating through space made him do some thinking, and he's come out of it a changed man. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was Baba Jibini's human trafficking rap sheet. He built that over 69 years years of cold-blooded African warlord-type transgressions. He raised the finest miniature armies to ever plunder the landscape. Everyone perished before his might. Men, women, children, don't matter. I'd even say the trans, but the only trans here are his aforementioned transgressions. He was pure evil, but now all he wants is to maximize your comfort. He's waging a war against modern-day stress with 420 millimeter shells full of relaxation. This run will have no wizard shit, no sex robots, just good old-fashioned forced child service toot and Afrim can just Justice. The kind my daddy used to make. Eh? Eh? Afrimkin. Good, right? Yeah, it's good. Afrimkin warlord Baba Jibini. God, it's just so fucking good. Before we begin, let's introduce our team, shall we? PETA fakes retardation for the handicap pass so he can get nugs from McDonald's before you do. Tiddler makes fun of women on the internet for the same reason he hangs out at parks because they're easy targets. Dr. Ruggs got his medical license in Tasmania and only performs breast augmentation surgeries, except each breast is filled with his own semen. Fister, well, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. Also the only girl on the team, so, you know, whiz kid. Idolized R. Kelly to the point where he has murdered 16 miners by drowning them with his own urine. I mean coal miners, not miners, you sick fuck. And Baba Jibini, he puts the B in BBC. He has bad credit because he makes poor financial decisions. No other reason. Don't be like that, guys. Come on. He's the Nigerian prince your cousin sent $5,000 to. Don't worry, though. She'll be living in his palace soon enough. He just has to use child labor to build it first, of course, but it's coming. Tell your 400-pound cousin Sally to sit tight a little longer. Baba likes him big. It's always whaling season in Nigeria. Oh, and Joe Biden knows what each one of them smells like. Except for Baba. He doesn't like Baba for... reasons. And I've made all my characters gay! No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that this time. This time. Okay, I made two of them gay. I recently signed a contract with Disney, and the deal was that 40% of the kids, not kids, need to be gay. They gave me fistfuls of cash, and I haven't looked back since. Every TV show and movie needs gayness in five forms or another these days, for reasons unbeknownst to me, and this video is no exception. So naturally, we'll need to pick out the best spot for our headquarters, and I like the look of this fertile soil. Ooh, so fertile. So we'll begin deforestation and slap down a rudimentary first base. Don't tell Smokey. Oh right, our xenotype and ideology. How could I forget? For the definitely not kids, they are fast dwarfs with no libido. I don't need that kind of smoke. They're also dutiful from Baba's brainwashing, and some of them have clown noses because I thought it was funny. Don't mind that it says baseliner. Some of the mods fucked up. And Baba actually is just a regular old baseliner. He's perfect as he is. A beautiful chocolate man. As the great poet and self-identified renaissance man Tupac once said, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And Baba Jabini's berry is dark as fuck, Bubba. Talking 90% dark chocolate. And yes, it's banana flavor. I would say eggplant, but that's not a berry. And yes, a banana is a berry. Our ideology is Kinyesi Waniwaji. After 30 seconds of Google Translate, I'm basically fluid in Swahili. Yes, fluid, not fluent. I identify as a Swahilan now. We're loyal stoned pirates. Very fitting for your African warlords, I thought. We raid, use drugs, and don't fuck. Again, I really don't need that smoke. We're really tight walking on a razor's edge with this video. The YouTube algorithm is gonna bend me over a barrel and cram its AI cock in my luscious asshole. Well, that probably did it. And yes, my asshole is luscious as fuck. 
bitch. I'll send pics later. We have a myriad of festivals you will see as we progress, and other than raiding and getting baked, our ideology doesn't play much of a part. Oh, and we have dope camo uniforms. Here's a quick list of the other factions, but you'll meet them all soon enough, so we won't go over it. So anyway, let's get a growing zone down, shall we? Of course we planted rice first, because it's fast, just like how my wife describes our coitus. We'll begin our research journey by getting batteries. Pretty standard, right? Oh, and how could I forget that we started with a throwback? The Dark Lord. Isn't she beautiful? We'll be suckling at her teats for the lovely milk she provides. All hail the true Dark Lord. Dark Lord's mummy milkies, mmm. We've got the basic base set up, minus a bathroom. If we were to salvage poops to make poop wine for our guests, we gotta start collecting that ambrosia stat. And look here, the tiddler's going to tittle. Or, uh, wash his hands. And of course, the one thing I was trying to prevent this video, Baba jumps on within the first few minutes. This is why they're not thematically child soldiers. They're just midgets with big red noses, really. I mean, RimWorld considers a 13-year-old an adult, right? Or 14? I don't know. Either way, I ain't playing that shit. Now, one thing you need to do early on in any new campaign is grow cotton. What? I'm not being racist. It's an actual game mechanic, you snowflake. We'll also get some coffee down to, uh, loosen up those pipes, if you know what I'm saying. And then we'll start on our first base expansion. And look, see? Another reason why I just made them midgets. They're not supposed to be doing this. Hell, I gave them no libido, and our ideologian prohibits this shit. Well, whatever. Bob and his midget army, it's canon now. We get a visit from the UN peacekeepers. They brought along their Patronus. I wasn't expectoing a Patronus, but he's got a very appropriate hat, so I guess it's alright. Huh? Who gets that joke? Fucking nerd. Batteries are done and we'll go into biofuel. We gotta get some power rocking in this bitch. It's already 69 degrees. Nice. And being in the tropics, we'll need that cooling pretty quickly. Oh, and the Dark Lord tried to flee to start up her own cult-like faction, so we strapped her to a pole. Don't worry, she'll be frolicking on bound soon enough. We set up some bedrooms for our cats. Yes, I could have made them all separate rooms, but that's not thematically correct. Baba has to have his own bedroom because, well, obvious reasons. We can't have him sleeping with the munchkins. He's already shown that he can't be trusted. And then visitors from Al-Qaeda want wanted to come stay with us. I had to turn them away because we're just not open for business yet. Their stress will have to compound for a while until we're fully functional. I just hope that it doesn't cause them to explode. Hell, we don't even have much poop yet, but we set up a doo-doo spot for future prep. Oh, and Baba gets his hands on those dark little nips. Sustenance provided by Her Majesty. Thank you, Dark One. Even in Rimworld, you provide for us. All hail. And if you'll please excuse my voice, I've been sick for a while now and it's uh, still a little nasally. But anyway, let's move on. Our guys have burned through our smoke leaf already, so we plant a field that's bigger than Lizzo. Gotta keep those little drug addicts fed or they'll get a case of the frowns. Another way to get the frowns is being attacked by a rabid monkey. I gotta say, I made some bad weapon choices too, I think. Yeah, I fucked up the micro. What do you want from me? The monkey fucked us up, but perhaps we can harness the power of the monkey to use it for our own gains. Hmm. Well, that'll come later, but for now, let's just see how Tiddler and Fister break the rules by becoming lovers. Though I couldn't think of a funnier pair to form a relationship. That red nose must really do it for the ladies. Look at him, smoking up like a pimp. Damn, Baba, that's big dick energy. Respect. So, since it looks like we'll be staying here a while, we'll give ourselves a name. Our faction? Baba's Boy Combatants, or BBC. And you already know our colony name, Tropical Interplanetary Tourist Spa. It's a pretty tits name, huh? Then the ATF comes waltzing through. We're hostile with the ATF, obviously. I mean, who isn't? And would you look at that? I knew the ATF were scaly lizard people, just like the Clintons. But we give them a wide berth and they fuck right off. Come back with a warrant, you bastards. Oh, and for those of you who don't know, bunk beds satisfy the lovers sleeping together need, but it prevents any nookie. You can also do this with two single beds pressed together, like the Mormons, just with less soaking. All the benefits, but with no spunk funk. Ah, spunk funk. Now that's a good name for OnlyFans. And now our first raid, the stereotypical Somalian pirates, Baba's main African rivals from the old days. It's just one dude, so we quickly destroy the poor boy and then finish him off. Take that, liberal. To celebrate our first win, we'll set our ideology roles. Baba is now the warlord, as he should be. It's so beautiful, so inspirational. The stars, the trumpets, wow. It's overflowing with moxie, kid. You too can have moxie by liking this video. Just one like and I'll shower you with my foamy moxie spew. Tempting, isn't it? Oh, I know. Everyone loves Moxie. Tiddler and Fister want to get married, which I'm just not going to do anything with. And now our first power, a wood-fired generator. Being in the jungle, we have an immense amount of trees, and green energy is gay, so we're not doing it. But let it be known that Baba Jabini cares about the environment. He holds in his farts so as to not leave a carbon footprint. Baba's been holding tight those broken spokes for 30 years, because as we all know, 
Farts kill polar bears. A faction bombardment has taken place nearby and is too damn juicy to pass up. So we send off Baba and Fister to scope it out. It's the European tourists and the ATF. My PC really doesn't like this, by the way. But the European tourists would rather fight each other. They must be Italian. They then begin their bombardment, and it's something straight out of a Michael Bay film. The carnage. The explosions. It's just so beautiful. The ATF retreat in shame like the cowards they are. And Bubba, just look at all that loot. Baba goes in to steal some swag. And I gotta say, this was very profitable. Part of what we got was a mortar and shells, which we'll store in a separate location, of course. Their personalities are too explosive to mix with the rest of our loot. They just wouldn't get along. Too volatile. But goddamn, that's some good upgrades. Meow. And it's time we get beer brewing to get working on that poop wine. Then we take a quest to make the UN like us a little more and watch after this nerd. I accept it with Baba, but we'll never actually do any of his rank ceremonies because that's not what we're here for. Then nature's perfect killing machine comes for homie's blood. The Sphinx Cat. Thanks to our recent upgrades, it was Child's Play. Well, not, not Child's Play. Definitely not Child's Play. And little homie fucks off. They gave us some apple juice that prevents cancer. This is such a Gemini move right there. Like, OMG, Becky, did y'all know that every star sign has a hairstyle? Well, except for cancer. Ba Baba has c cancer. He, <laughs> he, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just too soon. One mod I added in was the loot boxes, because that's pretty goddamn Christmas. So we slap one down and craft one for some silver. It's not bad, actually, and we got some advanced components out of it. But more loot boxes later. For now, let's start clearing some land for our hotel and research septic tanks to stock up on the doo-doo, baby. And Fister gets the role of Mitoto Yesu. And yes, these are actual Swahili words. Google it. At 10 days in, I think things are going pretty well. And it's 84 degrees in the poop house. Now that's some hot shits. Like after a Taco Bell Tuesday. We begin work on a kitchen and slap down a concrete mixer for easier building materials. It's actually kind of OP. One chunk makes like 40 fucking concrete blocks. It's nuts. The concrete is strong as fuck too. That'd be stupid not to do this. Now we'll research some early oil. As an American, I'm contractually obligated to do this. I'm also obligated to raid primitive nations for their resources. So when a steel mining site popped up, I mean... We had to raid it. Bob and Dr. Ugg shall be the vanguard. Though our doctor is stoned, but he can still kill some primitive pussies. Some primussies. <laughs> yeah, okay. While they rush off to trample indigenous peoples, we get a quest to help a counselor. I should have accepted it for the Glitter World medicine, but I mean, a loot box can be anything. So how can I refuse? I had to take the loot box. I don't have a gambling problem, shut up. This cat will do basically nothing but smoke all our drugs. This loot box better be worth it. Oh, and the cotton's coming in too. Oh, come on, man. And wow, our first concrete. It's so Asian. Got that Japanese concrete. Better not make a car out of it, cause, well, you know. Peekaboo. All right, the gang's arrived. Let's plunder. Gotta say, I question these cats' decoration choices, but at least they look happy about it. We quickly untied their balloon knots and crammed fistfuls of Baba's hot molten relaxation inducers right up there, completely shredding those little starfish. 5% of all canned tuna is starfish because of Baba. And we get the steel. Or we steal the steel. Ah, nice. Job well done, boys. Then Harambe gets pissed and comes after us. But then we had the best shot I've ever seen. It was almost a Cobain, but went full Kobe instead. Just edged that dynamite ever so rightly. Sorry, Harambe, but we'll make it up to you one day. And the kitchen's now done, so it's time we get the plumbing foundation set in. We'll need to for the transfer of poos throughout the colony. And our tobacco crop is ready. Oh, God damn it! look. It acts as a laxative. I have to grow it, okay? It's not my fault. Jeesh. Anyway, we get a golden shower and start constructing our guy's luxury bathroom. And then a pig man falls from the sky. In this run, we actually care about people's comfort, so we do the right thing and we rescue the bacon back bitch. We finish oil wells and go into the energy production section. Then some factions start fighting over precious resources, so how can we resist? And may I say, we should have resisted. Two enemy faction armies and mechanoids. We are well out of our wheelhouse here. So we hide in a corner until they kill each other and pray that no one notices us. They looted the best of the stuff, of course, so we're left with scraps, basically. But we got an exoskeleton, which was probably the best loot we got, so, you know, that's something. What do you think that is on the ground? Hmm. The Somalian pirates wanted another piece, while Baba and Tiddler were away, of course. We almost had a blue falcon incident, but it wasn't too bad. We scraped by okay and came out on top. Our guest finally leaves and we get our sought-after loot box. Let's see if it was better than the Glitter World medicine. Eh, I mean, okay, I, I guess. We get some acid immunity genes and have Fister cram them down her throat hole.
purple, but she also turned pink, so, you know, that's neat, I guess. Then we begin building a really neat wall, brother, to keep out the you-know-whos, and you know it's made of concrete. Hashtag MAGA, bitch. Hashtag yeah, fuck my cousin, but we don't wear the same pants, so we don't gotta worry about no sharing jeans. Hashtag okay, let's move on. A quest for some barbecue weather popped up. I was very conflicted. Oh, loot box, though. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I really wanted that loot box. The gamble is just so enticing, but I went with the armor. It was probably a smart idea, though that loot box could have been like 69 armors. Oh well. We may never know, but as the kids say, that's a vibe. Bob is looking good, babe. Hella vibe. So prestige. Wow, he's wearing a skirt? What? Oh, Baba. This really is a fucking Disney movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ, where's your pants? So anyway, the Polish came to trade and we unload some shit. It becomes dangerously hot for some reason, so we move the Dark Lord inside to cooler temps. We try and kick out the pig fucker because he's attempting to convert our peoples. It backfired a little bit and now he's even more comfy in one of our top bunks. We begin researching basic vehicles because it's cool as fuck. And then I realize the Dark Lord doesn't give a fuck about the heat. She lives in the fire. She is the fire, baby. Homeboy finally fucks off then the Dark Lord gets sick so we move her inside anyway. I guess the fire was just her fever. Now one thing I don't get is this guy complaining about cold showers. It's hot as fuck right now. He should love a cold shower. Game mechanics, am I right? We mark some more steel for mining and Fister regains consciousness. Now stronger and pinker than ever. Insert fisting pink sock joke here. The Dark Lord overcomes the sickness and back outside you go, my liege. Good girl. Another good girl is all these vehicles we can now make. Like the bang bus. Oh, you know it's gonna happen. How could I not? I mean, look at that butt. Baboon butt. Yeah, smell that ass, bitch. Then we get a visit from this bitch. A sheriff from Al-Qaeda. wonder if it... <laughs> uh, Look at all the sheriff of Al-Qaeda. He's probably on rollerblades. <laughs> oh, he's slippery when wet. What a bitch. <laughs> It's time now, we make a bunch of coffee and set our guys on a schedule to drink it. Coffee's pretty damn OP, I'd say. It makes them learn faster and other shit that I don't remember. But it's pretty good, though it does have some downsides which we'll see later. With some solid progress on our hashtag wall bitch, the heat wave comes to an end. I did notice that we have iced coffee and I couldn't figure out why. Turns out when you keep coffee in a freezer, it turns into iced coffee. Who knew? Makes too much sense for a video game. Gotta say, I'm impressed. Though I'm not impressed with our power grid that's basically on life support. So more wood fire generators it is. Until we can get that oil flowing, this will have to do. And finally, some hot showers for our guys. Though again, I gotta say, in this heat, give me cold, bubba. So hot here, fires just kinda happen. I don't know how these happen, but it's a good thing we built that wall. I've been somewhat struggling thus far to satisfy my guy's high need. Yeah, that's a hell of a fucking bogey, kid. That's instant cancer. <laughs> But machining is done now, so I can get some work improving tools. Another trade caravan and another wall section completed. So it's time to lay the foundation for a new workshop area. Don't mind the mass graves. Those are just the people who wouldn't relax. Baba Jabini doesn't like when you're tense. So let's smoke some doobies. Don't want to get Baba mad. You know, I feel like we would have progressed faster if my guys weren't stoned all the time. But hey, it's, it is what it is, you know. The Dark Lord then summons a blood moon, which looks pretty fucking dope. And we progress research to gun turrets to get some defensive options, of which we currently have none. Some child beggars arrive asking for medicine, and because we're good guys, we give it to them. It's a rough world out there. The ATF runs rampant, and then there's the gum disease gingivitis. So we help, just like Osama bin Laden. Baba Jabini is really not a bad guy. He's got a pure heart, just, just don't pay attention to the evil he does. And he's like Mother Teresa, who is actually kind of a bitch. Yeah. The more you know. The workshop is just about done, and I see a potential flaw in its design. But what's the worst that could happen? I mean, other than a catastrophic explosion, but it's fine. And we get a resource console down. It's almost oil time, bitch. We're coming along. Fister and Tiddler then get married, even though I never put down a marriage spot. So this really is turning into a Disney movie. God damn it. Well, I mean, they're both in their 20s, so it's fine. We already said they're definitely not child soldiers, so yeah. Then Fister and Peter got into a social fight. Now, normally nothing gets me harder than domestic violence, but this is not the fucking time. Cool your tits. Thank you. Was that so hard? Hard like my dick. Oh, you couldn't ask for better than this. Look at that oil. It's finally time, boys. We'll fool the guests into thinking everything is ran with green energy, gaslighting them with environmental love. But behind the scenes, the black gold flows. Crude, rude, and brimming with dudes, baby. Wait, no. Well, sure, okay. Give me them dudes covered in black gold, bubba. I, would that count as blackface? I mean, probably. <laughs> I'll just ensure to be rough when I fuck them to teach them a lesson. And if you don't like that joke, tell me all about it in the comment section. Heh, <laughs> got him. Wow, look at the cum gutters on this guy. Oh, Baba. God 
damn, I'd let my tongue slide right down them cum guts past the penis peak and just let that wet tongue settle right in Gooch Valley. Maybe build a nice little home, a place I can raise a family. Maybe plant a garden and grow supple little avocados. Spread them on toast even. Maybe use the avocado oil in my skincare routine. And maybe, just maybe, I'll rub a little bit of that oil right on them cummy gutties. And then I'd, um... So, RimWorld, right. We plan out the hotel to finally get that rockin', and bam, oil bitch. So I'm gonna pull Fister off hotel construction to drill for oil. I feel it's a little more important. Then we get a quest to host six people. You know, I was conflicted about taking this quest, but then we said, what would Jesus do? Well, definitely not this. So, what would Baba do? And he'd take them. So that's what we did. But we take advantage of the extra help while we got them, and honestly, they helped out a lot. Even though most of them are pretty trash, more hands on the construction of the hotel is dope, and we lay down some rudimentary defenses. Now, is this the optimal way to defend your colony? No, of course not. It's not even kind of. Not even a little bit. But is it badass to see a midget manning a machine gun mowing down agents of government overreach in mass? Well, yes it is. At least our guests enjoy a smoke sesh. They fit right in. Know who doesn't fit in? The ATF. Who decided to walk by? Again, I'm really happy we made these walls. We ignore them, but they get attacked by manhunting bunnies, which is awesome. So we get some free swag, and this snake comes to get some free swag for itself. He's having fun. Now this is pretty dope too. They're dueling each other. I love it. Makes them happy too. We plant some chem root, because I really need chem fuel, and this bitch gets mad and wants to destroy technology. The technology she's destroying is sandbags. Not the sharpest cookie in the toolbox, is she? You need to change your pronouns to find slash Jesus, because you fucked up, babe. Even Spider-Man can't save that ass. We finally upgrade some of our guys' defensive gear and begin building a stockpile zone. Only thing Baba hates more than stress is disorder. We need to unfuck ourselves for Baba. Then our guests leave. They did help out quite a bit, so I was kind of sad to see him go, but you know, no matter. It's now been 39 days and we haven't got our hotel up yet, but we're almost there. And all our guys are pretty happy, so you know, it ain't bad really. I mean, Baba's making art. Like other warlords of antiquity, he's a deep soul. That's why he makes a good manager, or a good they themager. His soul's as deep as this oil well, which is finally done being dug up. So naturally, we expand the power plant to support the new form of energy. And now, our guys start to become addicted to coffee. I mean, I guess I should have seen this one coming. But nothing bad will come from it, right? Right? But anyway, we get a high-tech research bench, so now things are getting serious. As serious as climate change and drug addictions. We need to research moisture pumps because a lot of the ground near us isn't buildable due to being too moist. Must have seen Baba's cummy gutties and juice. I get it, bro. I get it. I'm moist too, talking swass for days. Due to our ideology, we need to raid or we get mad. So I'm going to send Bob out for a quickie with a stranger. They met on raidersmeet.com. Time to pillage that booty, Bubba. It was trivial and we got the chocolate. We killed two people for some chocolate. Well, I get the Polish come a trading and we buy some construction jeans. Then cram it down Peter's throat hole. We got a lot of building to do for our future guests and we need all hands on dick. I'm, I mean deck. Well, that too. And bam, turning that oil into chem fuel, bitch. We're almost there. Energy independence. But we need components rather badly, so it'll have to wait. We'll open up the hotel soon anyway, so that's a plus. Then a transport pod crashes from Al-Qaeda. So, you know, we rescued them. Al-Qaeda are our closest and dearest friends. It's not weird. You're weird. Hey, at least it's not the ATF. Those guys are the real assholes. Then I realized we still had some components we could mine on the map, so we did just that. But we send Bob out to another faction defense for the hope of any salvage. So right now, pretty much everyone is incapacitated except WizKid and Baba is away. I was looking at a quest and, uh, well, just take a look. <gasps> Oops. I did not mean to do that. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Oh, shit. Yes, I fucked up. And now I have to micro between two maps. Dope. Gotta say, though, when Al-Qaeda attacks, it is, well, quite something. Take a look. <laughs> what is this? Baba kites around a few of them and leaves the majority to these clowns. Then he goes door to door looking for swag. Oh, the other map? Well, let's take a look. A few dudes showed up and we were too far away to make it in time, so... Well, quest failed. We won, but the quest bugged out because Homeboy wouldn't leave, so... It counts as a failure. It's not my fault, though. Oh, and then Baba brought back pretty much only food from that, so... You know, time well spent. So, back to busying ourselves with our labor. And throwing down our first oil-fueled power plant, baby. Oh yeah, Merc of bitches. 
Ooh woo, senpai. But we'll circle back to that. I'm happy to circle back, but I'll have to circle back. In the meantime, we get a raid, which is itself raided by wargs. And then they fight our bugged homie, who actually fucked him up pretty good. As for the remnants, well, in the utmost Afrimkin fashion, we nurture our fields with the blood of our enemies. And maybe a bit of our own. Shit though, if it's African, does that mean, like, did, did we just give our crops AIDS? Mmm, AIDS tobacco. Tobe AIDS. Aid Zacco. Then in the most American fashion, we had an oil spill, overflowing with some form of ambiguous gender fluid. So you're into pronouns, huh? Well, let me she them titties. I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. Compared to other YouTube channels my size, I make way less from ad revenue than they do. And I just don't understand why. Ah, that joke bombed so badly you could drop it on Palestine and turn it into a field of glass in a matter of seconds. Also, I could find no way to clean up the oil spill other than to ignite it, which I'm just not going to do. Intentionally, anyway. So now it's a feature of the oil field, and will stay there forever. It's integral to its operational status. That's right, we made oil spills work for us. They said it couldn't be done, and we made Mexico pay for it. Anyway, with our first guest beds, we're open for fucking business. It's about goddamn time, and our coffee is taken by blight. That can't have any negative consequences, right? But boom, our first guest. Easy money, bubba. The first of many. God, dude, she's gonna be so relaxed. I'm just so happy for her. And now, boys, it's time to start making our poop wine. Get the fecal incubator and haul that doo-doo. It's party time. Er, par pee time? Eh? Eh? Yeah, okay. And by the way, we made a dope ideology room that Baba decided to throw a disco in. So let's get fucking funky, baby. Oh, yeah. We're direly in need of steel, so we'll start the deep drill research. I mean, it had to be done. Peter makes the poop, and our energy production is better than ever. Mmm, you love to see it. Then visitors from Al-Qaeda are just in time for our first Baba's Merry Yesu celebration. Wow, so Christmas. So Yesu. So fucking good. And our new research room is looking quite snazzy already. God damn, I'm good at RimWorld, huh? Yeah, I know, I know. Almost as good as our very first batch of poop wine. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Now we just gotta set up shop and sell it to our honored guests. Also, I discovered where all my components were running off to. Remember those tools I was making? Yeah, they take components. A lot of components. So naturally, I shut that shit down. I kinda need them for other shit right now. Silly me. Then a high-ranking guest showed up and chilled out 30 silver for a lavish bed. This hotel is wonderful. I can just feel how relaxed they are. Relaxed pigs make for tender bacon. Mmm. So now we stock our new hotel gift shop with all the poop-inducing items we produce. I'm talking coffee, cigarettes, poop wine, doobies. Enough stuff to loosen even the most premium balloon knots. Then, a crisis. We were now out of coffee. I should also mention that by this point, every single person was addicted to coffee. So, uh, yeah, that kind of sucks. We went through six coffees per oil drum. We measure coffee consumption in oil drums per hour. What? As an American, I'll do everything possible to not use the metric system. So I panic sow some more coffee beans naturally and cross the fingies and toesies. But even with our crippling drug addictions, we must focus. The visitors keep coming and we need to relieve their stress and not worry about our own. Baba is a selfless man after all. And just like that, thanks to Al-Qaeda, our first sale. Then our second. And this guy bought fucking poop wine. It worked, boys. It actually worked. We can end it here. We just beat the game. This is awesome. You know... Al-Qaeda, I feel, would be the ones to drink poop wine. Yeah. Then the guy who's drunk on poop wine started working our resource console. I don't know if that's some form of German mind control shit, but god damn it, I'm in. We're making money, honey, and I couldn't be happier. Almost as happy as Baba when I set him off to write a play. I don't know whatever came of this, but I thought it was funny that an Afrimkin warlord wrote a play. Kind of like those other guys. Then finally, fabrication was completed. The component getting was handled like the Vietnam War. Which is not at all. We still need steel to make them, but at least we can make them. And just as things were going well, we were getting guests to relax, selling them their own poop, which I find funny as fuck. And our guys were beginning their caffeine withdrawal. The game started stuttering worse than Helen Keller if she had brain damage. I'm no whiz kid, but using my masterful smooth brain juice and some top secret CIA software, I was able to deduce the problem. The hospitality mod that lets you sell shit is busted and it busted my game. So be gone, thought. I had to remove the mod and now we can't sell any more shit slurp to our unsuspecting guests. Kind of a bummer, brah. But no matter. Baba is nothing if not adaptable. Well, and a piece of shit. Then when I thought my game was fixed, Brother Nature showed up in Power Ranger LARP attire. Some of Elon Musk's AI showed up to prove metal is better than meat, but to everyone's surprise, the meat bags won in the end. They were no longer red and I took out my bottled up frustration on their naked bodies. 
Nice. We captured one and sent him to Baba's playhouse to endure what can only be described as ear rape. Then our boys finally got their sweet coffee fix. Ah, look at him go. Merkin as fuck, Bubba. Black gold, bitch. Then since I could no longer sell shit wine to patrons, well, I'll sell shit people to Brother Nature. A ransom scheme took hold of the colony. Not only will we provide rest and relaxation to the weary traveler, we shall now offer the lives of those who would do us evil, well, to those who would do us evil, and get a neat little profit off it, may I add. Gotta make money somehow. And kidnapping and ransom is right up an Afrimkin warlord's sleeve, I'd say. So anyway, let's make a garage. Cause cars go burr, as the kids say. Which requires more steel we don't have, so Baba goes to our neighbors to borrow a cup of sugar. Only this time it's not a cup of sugar, it's a cup of their blood and all their belongings. Meanwhile, back at the hotel. Guests were coming, raids were popping, and prisoners were ransoming. I'm gonna have to cut out a ton from this, so bear with me. It's like 40 hours of footage crammed into this, so I hope everything makes sense. Our first car goes down. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to fucking roll. But before we get too crazy, let's calm down, gather up, and get everybody stoned as fuck with a good old-fashioned smoke sesh. Or in our case, a bangy sesh, baba. Er, baba. And Tiddler had to get a wooden hand. Don't ask where the last one went. With a name like Tiddler, I'm sure you can figure it out. I mean, his wife is named Fister, after all. But these nerds wanted to fuck around, so let's make them find out. It's not a kill box, it's a kill funnel. A funnel of fun. A funnel. Eh? Eh? All right, I'm sorry. But it's time we expand this bitch and get even fancier. I'm talking private rooms where our guests can be in peace. We gotta expand. Just look how popular we are. Like that one girl at your high school who had herpes. You know the one. And poor old Tiddler succumbs to a bout of confusion. Which is weird, because he's so fucking happy right now. Maybe he's confused why he's happy, or maybe he's watched too many Disney movies. I don't know. It just works. And now it's finally time we harness the power of monkey and tame a goddamn gorilla. The best hotels have gorillas. And goats named the Dark Lord who carries around a shiv. That's right, bitch. The Dark Lord's packing. We fucking got the gorilla. And we'll give him a gun. What could go wrong? This is awesome. Good job, Baba. Go relax now, you've earned it. I shall name you Bobo. Y'all thought I was gonna do Harambe, huh? R.I.P, bitch. Later on, Bobo will become my spirit animal. Sorry, Dark Lord. All right, actually, toxic masculinity is my spirit animal, but we'll pretend for Bobo's sake. And check out this new swanky room, fit for a Praetor. Not that any of them visit us, but they could. And our first vehicle is ready. I shall name you High AF Man, because it's Highwaymen and we're stoned like all the time. Get it? Yeah, it's not a good joke, but I couldn't think of anything else, so shut up. Oh god, this thing's gay. It's fucking awesome, but pretty gay. Oh, that's better. It screams African Warlord Meow Bay. Oh yeah, this thing's badass, bubba. And if that wasn't good enough, we're all maxed out on oil. George Washington is coming in his grave as we speak. <laughs> You guys want to see the Dark Lord's beaver? God, not that, you sick fuck. She named her Shiv the beaver. God, what's wrong with you? Fucking degenerates. Gotta build this wall to keep y'all out. T-Dog was right all along, wasn't he? Huh, the more you know. Need this wall to protect Al-Qaeda. They're like our best friends now. It's, uh, it's something all right. Tits. And it's far overdue that we slap down a hospital. I have a feeling shit's gonna pop off soon. So we better check out our latest loot box. We got a Silink Neuroformer that I'm just not going to use. Nothing but smooth brains for our colony. Then the Somalian pirates came for our luscious booty. So it's time to test out our new toy. And in typical ATF fashion, they raided us too because guns are bad. They care about our weapons a lot, but they didn't care when Baba raped a man from the poor side of town. Rough style. Fucking retard. Get him, boys. Turns out this thing wasn't meant to drive around the jungle, and we get clapped pretty well. So we abandon it and get in formation. Bobo. <laughs> Bobo's here. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude, Bobo. Then, our brave Bobo, Sigma Chad Grinder, pops out from behind cover and starts fucking blasting. I started blasting. Our hero took some hits. Lord knows why. But we quickly patch up our hero. He saved the goddamn day, dude. Fucking Bobo, dude. He's got moxie. So you know the drill by Meow. Capture and ransom, easy money. Also turns out that whiz kid shot Bobo. That little fucker, dude. We're gonna make him suck the polish off Bobo's toes to make up for it though. To avoid this in the future, we'll add some more funnel walls. Eh, eh? Yeah, okay, whatever. I, I just don't want Bobo to get hurt anymore. Now we'll build a ground penetrating scanner that I won't actually use. 
So I basically just wasted the resources we don't have to build it. Dope, right? We take a quest for a loot box to host a gala for the weakest hive I've ever seen. And I send two people incapable of firefighting to uh, fight the fire. They burn themselves. Not bad for a bug. I'll take it. I then realized that I can build advanced deep drills, so I did just that. No need to rape the ground uh, on, on Roblox. Just cracked on to 85 days and god damn it, I'd say we're doing pretty good. Then I realized for lols, I had to build the bang bus. Worst thing I did in this game. I, I just, I just, well... You'll see. And no, I don't load up the Dark Lord for a fucking. I'm not from Kentucky. To keep the hotel train rolling, the UN came to stay, and we of course took their money. Lord knows they have plenty of it, and apparently they scared away the Polish, so, you know, I guess they're good for something. Disney fairy indoctrination! Wow, beautiful. I feel fruitier already. To make it more thematically Disney, we finished the bang bus. Baba's bang bus. I, of course, African it the fuck out. No, I painted it, not starved it, you turd burger. Which is actually a burger they will eat in Africa because they're starving. Okay. So anyway, Al-Qaeda were the first to rent our luxury top tier room. Nothing but the best for my friends Al-Qaeda. And then they gambled even more of their money away. But dudes got pocket aces, so I think they're cheating. Well, I mean, they are cheating. They're fucking Al-Qaeda. Speaking of gambling, I'll take a three raid quest for some more loot boxes. What's he controlling that console with? <laughs> Anyway, we get some more defenses ready and finish the wall before our raid triad. Our triad. Eh? All right, so the first raid comes. Kick their ass, second raid, samesies. Third raid, you already know. These rugrats are turning this field into a real American kindergarten. This is why America can't lose a fight. We start training young, motherfucker. Get some, bitches. Capture, ransom, loot box. Good shit, too. Vanimetric power cell and some jeans. But one in particular. Baba now has regeneration and vacuum sealed. Yes, we melted a plastic bag onto him. Maybe he has an asphyxiation kink. I'm not here to judge. But we're not done improving Baba. Oh, no, babe. It's gonna be big. Huge, some would say. Look at Bobo hauling milk. Wow. And single-handedly saving Tiddler from a rabid lemur. Double wow. God, I just love him so much. More even than our new luxury pool. Ooh, fancy. We also made like a boarding room area with bunk beds for the poor. They're gross and undeserving of luxury, but I'll still take their money. What little they have of it anyway. I mean, I'm not an asshole. I even made them an auto bong. It'll splooge out doobie smoke 24 fucking 7. Keeping everyone baked is that one guy from that one movie. Yeah, him. Surprise disco party. Nice. That's a cool pool, baby. You know, I think I care too much. Kiss that stress goodbye. I also sent Baba to a looted vault. I don't know what I was expecting with a name like Looted Vault. There was nothing here, so I took some steel furniture to break down. I mean, it's something, I guess. We do need steel. Brother Nature decided to fuck around, and Bobo stoned off his ass, so luckily the cowboy LARPers are here and let them find out. Is what I would say if they weren't friends, apparently. So Tiddler one-man armies the shit out of the ordeal. Tiddler is also stoned as fuck. I needed Baba to move his bang bus out of the garage, and his ass must also be stoned, because, well, just, just watch. Oh, look out. Whoa! Oh. Oh, Jesus! Oh my god! Wow! Oh, god, he just took out his fucking leg. He did a hit and run on our only doctor, destroying one side of his body. It's even better because it happened at the only crosswalk in the base. Dr. Uggs got banged by the bang bus, so, yep. Glad I made this fucking bang bus. Baba's bang bus. Brother Nature decided to fuck a Wait a minute. I'm getting deja vu. Weird, but we successfully shot our enemies and Bobo, so it was a success? I mean, no and yes, but I'll take more prisoner money. Gotta pay for a new leg for Dr. Uggs since Baba, well, you know. And the genius that is Wizkid tried to fight our injured prisoner and got his arm destroyed. Wow, things are going so well now. This is great. Guess Wiz is actually kind of a pussy. But Bobo ain't, so he went and fucked up the very same prisoner. Jungle justice, motherfucker. Get Bobo down. And Bobo even applied jungle medicine to them. Wow, what can't he do? He's amazing. And when a transport pod crashed from the sky, we captured his wounded ass too. I also swapped the prison around so that they'd be more comfy. Remember, relaxation is number one, babe. We're switching gears now. No more ransom, just relaxation. Forced relaxation. It's not rape if you're relaxed. Gandhi said that. Don't, don't, look, don't look it up. Ah, quest for loot boxes. Well, you know we're doing it. And all we need is Bobo, dude. Obviously, easy loot box and easy prison, er, I mean, guess. Hmm, speaking of guests, these guys look a little too stressed. I think we'll extend their stay here. Indefinitely. Is this Baba's evil arc? Well, I wouldn't say evil. More like, uh, yeah, all right, he's evil again. Kidnapping and forcing stress relief. 
It's beautiful when it comes down to it. They will love their new forever home. I promise, nothing bad will happen here. Nope, and fuck the Polish anyway. I'm keeping your people, but I won't leave them hanging out to dry. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, I am. I'm totally doing that. And now they're going to be really stress-free. Forced stoning, but not the kind the Saudis do when you're a woman. No, no, the kind cults do when they... Wait. And now to negotiate with terrorists and piss off the UN. We accept a deserter quest, which was the beginning of our downfall. Fister was killed by the UN. They sent fucking John Wick after us. He also killed our recently invited deserter friend. And most unfortunate of all, the Dark Lord became sad. I don't know if we'll ever emotionally recover from this. Spoiler alert, we won't. And then to avoid racism, we hung the pink person next to the white person. See, equal hangings, not racist. Dr. Uggs got a promotion to our new Matoto Yasu, and our guests couldn't be happier, which is the real goal here. Everyone is expendable, except for them. Oh, and Fister's husband, Tiddler, doesn't give a flying fucking hell about her death. Excellent relationship they had, huh? Due to our lack of manpower and increased responsibilities, I had to get creative with how to feed our prisoners. They wouldn't take food directly from the fridge themselves, so I had to just periodically dump it on the floor. Yeah, I mean, it works. It's not ideal, but it works. I'm just, uh, I'm just so busy. Now to keep up with the spirit of the season. Let's open our presents. Ah, there we go. Good job, Baba. Merry Christmas, you fucking degenerate. The most notable gifts we got was a titan frame jean, and what was in Pandora's box? What could be inside of it? I don't know. Let's find out together. It was... A faction assault. Don't know how they fit that inside a tiny box, but hey, you know, I'll take it. I mean, I can't return it. I didn't keep the receipts. I was hoping for a dick in a box, but you know, whatever. It was neat to watch, I guess. And I think the Goss rifles are bugged, because those ain't going away. And WizKid is a bitch, by the way. He fucked up our tank. We just lost so many resources we don't fucking have. Wiz, you a bitch. But now, let's be even less racist. We're doing anti-gentrification. So the black guy gets the spot in the tree. Shit, is, is this still racist? But it's anti-gentrification. The pink bitch gentrificated on the tree, but now he's in the tree, so it's not gentrif- Ah, oh, fuck, man. I, I don't know which way is up. Am I a good person or is this fucked up? Shit, I need Jesus. At least the mayonnaise ghost face cracker is still in the tree too, so. Equal rights, equal trees? Anyway, let's have Baba cram that Titan frame down his hole. Oh yeah, babe, Mondo Baba now. Just imagine how gigantic that BBC is now. Like a BBBBC, bigger than the bang bus. Baba's bang bus. I just thought this would be funny, is why I did it is all. Big ass Baba. <laughs> Ooh, big ol' cum gutties, too. Wow, you could toboggan down them gutties. Go spelunking in that cavern, too. You know the one. And a Christmas miracle was now born. The Dark Lord summoned her minions. I think maybe she was just lonely. I say that because shortly after she became pregnant, Dark Lord trying to smash that goosey cuz. Mmm, just like my cousin used to do. Rough style. Shit, you know, maybe we are in Kentucky. It's now been 122 days and we're slowly slipping into the gutter more and more. No, not those gutters. It's about time to wrap things up here. If you've stayed this long, thank you. I hope you've been enjoying it. This video is way too fucking long, but what the hell, right? I make movies now, I guess. Move over, Quentin Toronto. So anyway, I love how small Baba's hands are now. He's kind of like that Whopper guy, am I right? Yeah, I'm right. I fucking love I did this, by the way. So we finally made the tank and named it the Bull Hog. Nice, right? I gave it that African motif. The Dark Lord was so happy she had more sex. She's already pregnant, but hey, whatever. It reminds me of a joke. I was tickling my son's feet the other day and my wife was yelling, stop it, stop it, wait till he's born. Oh yeah, let's try out that tank. Yes, Baba fits inside, somehow. Maybe Crisco, I don't know. Don't, don't fucking question it. It's pretty fucking sick, dude. Well, there goes that sandwich I made. Should've used the Martha Stewart instead of the Anarchist cookbook. It did claim to explode with flavor. I should've read between the lines. That's what I get for buying a cookbook from Al-Qaeda. And now, to finalize our storytelling here, the world has caught on to Baba and his gang of midgets. We just wanted to help them relax, but they call it kidnapping and torture and evil. Bitch, it's called a spa day. Or in this case, a spa life. It's a lifestyle. So what do these pussies go and do, you ask? Well. Just watch this. It's like Waco all over again. PETA, spin up the kill dozer. Bob is going in. They sent their armies, crashing upon us like waves upon a rock. I'd call it hectic, but that doesn't even begin to describe it. They fell into my big gay trap. You triggered my trap car! Now this is what I call a target-rich environment, Bubba. One by one, our team fell. Overcome by stress and anxiety, we just wanted a place to relax and to share that relaxation. We may have turned this tropical paradise into a blood-covered hell on earth, 
But it's still not as bad as an American kindergarten. Shouldn't have taken away my fucking slurping paste, Mrs. Margaret, you bitch. Don't worry, though. I called the homies and told them not to come to class today. I am for the boys, after all. And then Baba, in typical warlord fashion, made for a daring escape. Solo, of course. His peons had to hold them off. He flees for the bang bus. Baba's bang bus. Brave Peta held the line long enough for Baba and his tiny little hands to escape. As the bullhog runs out of ammo, Peter grabs a nearby grenade launcher off of a local corpse. Overtaken by bloodlust and having had enough brainwashing to give his life for Baba's, he charges the enemy. Just to fall to their Taco Bell aftermath. Oh, Peter, you brave, brave soul. He's got fucking moxie, that's for sure. And then he repeated Stephen Hawking's famous last words. Baba Jabini demands your comfort, and who's more comfortable than the dead? So boys, here dies Baba's dream of ridding the world of stress. But I'd say he did pretty damn well. He touched countless lives in many ways. I just hope his mission lives on in all of you. Relax, don't stress, it just doesn't matter. Because after all, one day you're going to die. And then, it won't matter anyway, because you'll be dead. So enjoy life while you can, my friends. For it, like Baba, is fleeting. Merry Christmas, you nerds. It's been a good year. I appreciate all of your support and look forward to the next one. Tell me in the comments what you want for Christmas so that way I know you made it this far. I'll talk to Santa for you. I love you all. And a special thanks to the members of the Cheesemonger Society who have a reserved room at Baba's Tropical Interplanetary Tourist Spa. So with that said, come stay at Baba Jabini's, where you will have fun. You will have fun.